Hello everyone, and as the theme for this TEDx here go, to reinvent the wheel. Humans have been dependent on the wheel for a very long time for transportation. However, in recent years, the plane engine has been invented, so humans' transportation became even more convenient than ever. So you have been asking, what's the wheel that we're inventing today? Society has been creating many things, social standards and insecurities that's been haunting in humans' head for a long time and those things kind of running in society right now. That is the will of society that I'm reinventing today by telling people how to become secure in a world that is profiting off insecurities. So now let's start with a little backstory, aren't we? So there once was a little girl who was very talkative at birth. She loved to talk and she loved to socialize with just about anything. She can talk for hours and hours and never get any and never get tired of it. However, when she grew up and became a teenager, she started using social media and all she saw were perfect women with perfect bodies, perfect personality and a ton of followers. They were majestic, godly beautiful with shiny long hair and strictly aligned teeth. Their body proportions were golden. And outside her, on her daily life, she started to realize on how her peers would comment and judge others based on their appearance and personality. As a little girl, with no one telling her on how she should act, she realized that it's easier to follow these standards and so what did she do? She followed the standards and became very quiet. The more she knew about the standard, the more she lost her confidence to it. She became really quiet and her bubbly personality just aren't there anymore. She would spend days thinking about how she should act so that people would like her, how she should, how she should act so, so that she would not get any judgment. So she hid herself out in the spotlight and she just hit herself in like a very dark spot behind the curtains. So, however, a social, but a social butterfly can spend its whole life hiding in the cocoon forever. It's not what her wings are made for. So one day she decided to put away all the thoughts of other, other opinions on her. And that's when she lived the most free life as possible. She has the well. She has a very healthy mindset, a, a, a very healthy and secure mental state of mind in a world that is that is surrounded by others' insecurities. So, how are these insecurities created in the first place? As you can see, humans are social animals from the dawn of evolution. We gather in packs, and packs later turns into hierarchy. Like this, this uh, ancient Egypt's hierarchy consisting of all this. So how? So what I was saying is that when we when we form in groups like this, in order to survive, we need to go hunting and we need to go out there and make some, right? So what happens when we go out there and make some is that is that we some of us are gonna are gonna eat more food and there are and there are also different types of, of hunting and different types of making more based on each of us different strengths and with it and weaknesses because as human we might be similar in like bio, biological thingies but we are but we also have soul and different ways of thinking so each of us have different strengths and weaknesses however that also results in two things that is the uneven allocation of resources and that humans became greedy so what i meant by uneven allocation of resources is that is that there's got to be some humans who hunt more than other who thinks of a smarter way to hunt to hunt animal down right there's gonna be someone there's gonna be someone who is more well fed who is more wealthy so who is more wealthy and that makes them happy however the fact that they are happy drives jealousy and envy in other humans who is who hasn't got 
those things yet. And that's and those two things results in something called social standards. So what are these social standards, you might ask? It is, it is the invisible requirements of, a hu of how good a human should be so that we can be happy. We, so that we can be happy, we can be wealthy, and we can live a very happy life, you say. Um, and, this, and this thing is that it's, very, it's the very thought that harms every human. It's daunting and it's tiring to think about it every, every time a human thinks about it. And that's when and that's when it differs from male to female. So for example, for a woman, what is the perfect woman of social standard? She's pretty, she's, she's not, oh, not just pretty, like majestic, really, really godly beautiful. And she must have had long legs, long hair, perfect skin, perfect fingers, perfect nails, arm, and like a really cool, obedient, Oh, like ob obedience, always saying yes to everybody, always have a smile on her face that everybody likes. That's for a woman. And for men, it is to have a really ridiculous amount of money, really big success, really big success. Have a house on the beach side. Have have like uh, have like a very big five story house in the mountain or just really big success and like being tall really muscular with that like square jaw and high nose and everything that's the social standard for men and those things differ and those things even differ from country to country too like for example in asia in asia we would prefer women with, with like fair skin and you know like a v-shape uh, with like a v-shape jawline like that while while in western countries People prefer curvy women with tan skin more because it is deemed more sexy. And those things differ from places to places. However, when we know about this thing, there's something called a comparison, a comparison mechanism. When we start comparing ourselves to one another, maybe from between, maybe we compare two strangers with each other, us or us with one stranger or maybe us with other peers that is living with that is living and befriending us every day and thus and those things starts with insecurities and insecurity usually starts with a questioning of is she prettier than me is she taller than me or maybe is she smarter than me is he more successful is does he has um, better grades than me are they funnier or like why are they getting so much attention and I don't? Why don't I have this? Why don't I have that? And that and all of those questions and all of those questioning finally leads to one final question. What is wrong with me? Is it my face? Is it my body? Is it is it because I have bad grades? Is it because of my um, of my background? I came from a rural background. Is that why people don't like me? Are those are those what what are the things about me that people don't like so that don't like so much that I don't have those things like other people do that other people do? And this question stems from the deepest side of insecurity in our mind is that is that we are not we are not achieving the standard the way we want it to and that's when this this question leads to many other problems such as low self the pro, the issue of low self esteem that that is that is something that many people millions trillions of people are facing nowadays this thing results in this low self-esteem thing results in depression, anxiety, body dysmorphia, eating disorders, and many and many other really bad illnesses, mental illnesses that takes away the life of many people of many people every single year. That's a really bad thing. But like so 
what do we came to mind is that how our society really specifically using our insecurities that makes us feel so bad about ourselves. So just imagine someone coming up to you and, and say things like, you're bad, you're ugly. Do they really mean it? Well, maybe they do. But why do they do it? They do it because somehow they feel bad about themselves too. And in order to feel better, and in order to feel somewhat better about themselves, somewhat, somewhat to heal their fragile ego, they say these things to you so that they can put you down and somehow putting you down means pushing them a ladder up. And that's, and that's in our daily life. But like, what are society using? One side of consumerism is that, is that when it tells people to keep buying things, right? And many corporations saw humans' insecurity as an opportunity to marketing. And that's, and that's when they say like, oh, if you buy our product, you will feel happy. It will fix all your existing flaw. And then you will, and then you will feel, and then you will feel happy for your entire life. Your life will be fixed. You, you are gonna live a life with tons of money, tons of food, and people are gonna like you. That's what society is telling you. So imagine, so imagine the beauty industry is tell it, it is telling you, oh, your skin, look at that. Oh my God, it's so pale. It's so pale and you have some pimples too. Buy some foundations and cover it up so that you'll have this per perfect porcelain doll-like skin but, and then people will, are gonna like you. Oh my god, look at your nose. It's not high, isn't it? Have some nose contour and it's and you are gonna feel like you have a drawn you have a drawn plastic surgery. Oh my god, why are your lips so pale? Have some red lipstick, it will liven things up. Or maybe the fashion industry goes, are you seriously wearing that? It's 2023. Buy some new clothes on so that you can look trendy. But look in the reality. Do you die or maybe stop existing if you don't have some makeup on? No, you can still live. What you need is food, oxygen and water. Not some clothes or not some makeup. And later, and later on, society is telling you that you will feel very bad and people are not gonna like you if you don't have these things. But in the reality is, men, the, the relationship that stays the most, that stay the longest after, after you... The relationship that stays the longest is the relationship that that is based on personality, the, the most important thing, the, the thing that makes you, you in our life. Your personality is one, is one of the most important factors that decides whether you are going to feel happy, you, whether, you are go, whether you are going to be successful or not, is your personality. And society is gaslighting you into thinking that things that make that the things that make a person is just their outer appearances such as clothes or maybe the way they talk their teeth or maybe the makeup they put on that's what society is telling you but like a midst of all of this mess how do you actually become secure so back to the story of when i was a little girl i I know that people like girls that are quiet, so I become quiet myself. Did I get more likes? Yeah. Nah, I didn't. Uh, and what? And what did I? And like, what did I realize from that is that it doesn't matter how much I try to live up to the standard, I will never be enough. And when I start following these standards, people are suddenly attracted to me more because of my individuality. The way, the way that I just be, the way that I, I just am, may be a little strange, may be a little bit quirky, but it's okay. It's me, it's myself. 
and and that and that thing is what that makes I Phong Thuy Anh the most important thing to me. My personality don't lose that. So what do I do? Two words. Stop caring and say I don't care. You're bad. You're stupid. I don't care. Okay. You wear those clothes look ugly on you. I don't care. Why do you Why do you still do things like this? Why 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 aren't you just be a normal girl? Because I am not, and I don't care what you say. Stop caring about others' opinion and start living as yourself. Start being the person that you are and build a very strong and healthy mindset. I know that building confidence and to become and to have a secure mindset is something that is very hard. Sometimes other opinions still bugs me to this still bug me to, to this day. But after I say I don't care, uh, I kind of forget about it after one, two days and then I get back to this happy, quirky state. So what so that's the thing that you need to do say I don't care and in order to build your confidence from someone who has like a very low self-esteem and want to cope with it I suggest a way that you should look in the mirror you should look in the mirror every single morning stand in front of it like this and say I and look look into it and say I am beautiful I am perfect in the way just I am I'm, and I'm gonna slay the day and that's and do it for like 30 days straight in a month and you'll see immediate results right after and right after and when people say bad things to you just don't care and it's and even though it's a really hard thing to stop to like to stop thinking about this thing whenever you are overthinking take out a journal write those thoughts on on it or maybe just read or maybe just really get yourself really focused on other things like a book or like a book or a movie that will keep you distracted or maybe just do homework or like other stuff that you're having your mind will be so busy thinking about all these things that you can do with your life rather than taking others opinion and that's and that's really how you can become secure listen you are Oh, you are an individual that only you have. Your mother didn't strip the hell out of a vagina to get you out of this school just for you to live under under others' opinion and expectation. You gonna live as yourself, and you are gonna be the and you are gonna be the one that stays the same forever because you. Because you are you, you are an individual. Your originality, your individuality, your characteristic is that what makes you you. And no one is never gonna change it about you. So live your life the way, the, the most free way as possible. And don't let anyone's expectation or opinions hold you down on your path of success. Thank you for listening. And that's how you can stick here in a world that is providing off the insecurities. Bye.